All right, guys, good morning, afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. In today's video, we have the age old question. How can we trust the Bible when it has so many errors and contradictions? Now, I'm not asking that question as someone who actually believes that question to be true, because honestly, I know better. But make no mistake, guys, the world is full of non-believers who will try to push that lie. For the most part, these are people who have either never read the Bible and repeat statements they hear in their echo chambers, or even worse, they're people who have cherry picked verses out of context and think they've cleverly proved something that can be disproved proven by someone with a fifth grade education. This can actually be demonstrated in the clip we're about to watch. Here Dr. Turk answers a seemingly sincere question from a skeptical college student. How do you account for the errors in the Bible? And it's a great, not to mention fair question, so let's see how an expert balances those supposed errors, then we'll talk about it on the other side. Um, how do you account for the errors of the scribes um, when the New Testament was handed down person to person? Yeah, excellent question. There are errors that we know about. Why? because we can compare the documents, we can compare the manuscripts and see where the errors are. In fact, let me see if I can show you a representation of that because it's better seen uh, than it is described. Here it is. Let's say you have, here's the original, which we don't have. We don't, at least we, we, we don't think we have any original documents, okay? So they're all copies, okay? Uh, and let's say you find four different copies. And in the first copy, you see an error right here. And then uh, another copy, there's another error right there. In the third copy, there's another error right there. And in the fourth copy, there's an error right there. Can you reconstruct the original? Yes. Yes. And that's what scholars do. The original, this happens to be Romans 6, or Romans 3.26, God is just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Now the note here is the New Testament documents have far fewer variations than this example. So yes, sometimes scribe made mistakes, but in virtually all cases, we know what the mistake was and we can correct it by comparing it with other documents. Now, you might say, why wouldn't God just, if this is true, why wouldn't he just maintain the original? I'm speculating here, but I think one reason, well, two reasons. Number one, if we had the original, we might venerate it. We tend to venerate things like that, right? But number two, if I had the original, what could I do to it? I could alter it, right? But if you had a copy, 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 and I had a copy, and I changed my copy, is everyone going to know who changed their copy? Yeah, because when you get all your copies together and compare it to mine, you go, Turk, you heretic, why'd you do that? Right? So by not preserving the original, you actually are able to preserve the original better. So what if the error is not that simple? Like, uh, what if it's a... It's a a difference in concept. Um, so if we have these copies and say copy one gets 12 copies, copy two gets 24 copies, and then you've got copy four that gets 400 copies, but copy four is the incorrect copy, then how do we justify truth in that? As well as how do we justify the truth in Jesus's exact words when we didn't hear them ourselves? Okay, there is no significant doctrine, theological doctrine, that is affected by any variant. In, and who admits this? Bart Ehrman himself, okay? So Bart Ehrman, the great skeptic, admits that the New Testament documents are reliable. In fact, let me, let me show you a quote from him because this quote is very uh, right on the money. You know, he wrote the book, Misquoting Jesus. I don't know if you've heard of this book, but in 2005, he wrote a book called Misquoting Jesus, a popular book. Uh, in which he tries to insinuate that we can't trust what the New Testament documents have said. Yet the very same year, 2005, he wrote an academic work. He updated an academic work with his mentor, Dr. Bruce Metzger from Princeton University. In fact, Metzger was the top manuscript scholar of the last century. And in that book, he agrees with Metzger that the New Testament documents are copied accurately. Now, why is he coming to two different conclusions the same year, same evidence? The only thing I can speculate is when you say to the academic community something wrong, they'll correct you on it. But when you say something wrong to the lay community, they don't know any better in most cases. You can sell a lot of books when you say the New Testament documents aren't copied reliably. That gets you a review in the New York Times, gets you on the Colbert Show, the Jon Stewart Show. You sell a lot of books. Right, what's that? A textbook to be studied. We're studying Ehrman now. You're studying Misquoting Jesus? Um, no, his textbook, um, The New Testament. Okay, well, that one that he co-wrote with Metzger is actually good. But this one, this one, now here's what he says. This is in the appendix of the 
paperback version. So this comes out a year or two later from the original Misquoting Jesus. He's interviewed. And in the interview, here's what he says. Check this out. This is a quote from the book, page 252. He says, Bruce Metzger is one of the great scholars of modern times, and I dedicated the book to him because he was both my inspiration for going into textual criticism and the person who trained me in the field. I have nothing but respect and admiration for him. And even though we may disagree on important religious questions, he is a firmly committed Christian and I am not. We are in complete agreement on the number of, on a number of very important historical and textual questions. What are they in agreement on? If he and I were put into a room and asked to hammer out a consensus statement on what we think the original text of the New Testament probably looked like, there would be very few points of disagreement, maybe one or two dozen places out of many thousands. The position I argue for in misquoting Jesus does not actually stand at odds with Professor Metzger's position that the essential Christian beliefs are not affected by textual variants in the manuscript tradition of the New Testament. Well, why would you write misquoting Jesus then? Not you, but Bart Ehrman, right? Why is, I mean, the book maybe should be called Misquoting Ehrman because he doesn't even agree with himself. So it seems that even Ehrman, when, when push comes to shove, admits that we do have an accurate copy of the New Testament documents. Now, your second question is, how do we know verbatim what Jesus said? We might not know verbatim what he said because there are no quote marks in Greek, so we're not always sure exactly if it's a quote or if it is a paraphrase, because Jesus probably spoke in Aramaic, yet the documents are written in Greek. But that's okay, you can communicate truth in, in different languages, and you don't have to be exact with what he said. You can get the gist of it. In fact, Jesus said he was an itinerant preacher. He probably gave the same talks in several different places, right? I mean, if you followed me around, I go around to different campuses, I give the same presentations over and over again, but I might say things slightly differently in one place than another place. So maybe one guy heard it one way, another guy heard it another way. We have the gist of what Jesus said. And that's really all God wanted to uh, tell us. Also, uh, you might imagine that at those times, people had highly developed memories. They could memorize complete books. We can't even remember our phone number because <laughs> we have all these devices that remember it all for us. So these people were an oral culture and they memorized things quite well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, as basic as it can get. Now, mind you, I know that there are those out there who will still be doubtful, and that's understandable. So I'll end this video with a question to my non-believers. If you are so sure that the Bible is false, why is it that the world approaches the Christian Bible with a cynicism and skepticism that you wouldn't dare to approach any other text with? You don't do it to the Quran or the Torah, and you especially don't question the authenticity of historical accuracy of any book you've ever read, you just accept it as truth and move on. Biblical events have been verified countless times throughout historical accounts and archaeology more times than any other text in human history, I would argue. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because you don't want it to be true. Because if the Bible is true, then you'll be held accountable for your actions one day, and God forbid people can't do whatever they want free of consequence, especially in today's society where everyone is told to do pretty much whatever the heck they want. But let me know what you guys think. Type amen in the comment section if you agree. And if not, let me know anyway. Everyone is welcome here. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell for event notifications. It really does help the channel a lot. Be safe, be good, be blessed, and remember guys that Jesus is king. Have a good one, and I'll see you soon.